Hi there, welcome to Bite Size Piano. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use the sustain pedal. I use the pedal quite a lot in most of my tutorials, and I often get asked questions about the pedaling as well. It's not something I usually go in depth with. So in this lesson, I'm gonna go in depth with like the rule of thumb of how you use the pedal and go over what's called legato pedaling. If you don't have any pedals on your piano or keyboard, there are some really good universal ones that you can just plug in around the back of most keyboards. It's important that they look like this and not like this. So they're a bit more heavy weighted and the more like more sturdy, those are the ones you need. So I'm going to show you my pedals now. So I have what's called a hybrid piano. So it's electric, it's digital, um, but it's got the hammer action feel of a real piano. And the pedals on pianos can do different things. So I'm just going to go very generally, go over what mine do, but the focus is on the sustain pedal today. Let's go have a look at my pedals. So here are my three pedals. So we're just going to go through the names of them. So the one we're going to really look at and speak about today is this pedal here, which is actually called the damper pedal. It's more commonly called the sustain pedal because it sustains the sound. It um, elongates the sound of the notes. So on a, an actual piano, it's called the damper pedal because when you press the pedal, it lifts the dampers up, which stop the note from muting so it rings out. When you pluck a piano string, which there are actually multiple strings on the piano, when you pluck one note you pluck multiple strings. So you would pluck the string and then a damper would go on it to stop it from ringing out. So when you press the damper pedal you pluck the string but the dampers don't go back on and that's what creates the elongated sustained sound. The middle one is called the sostenuto pedal, which is Italian for sustain pedal. <laughs> so this does get confusing. This means that you can sustain selected notes without it affecting any other the notes that you're playing. And I will demonstrate all of these pedals with the focus being on the damper sustained pedal. Sometimes this middle pedal, if your piano has a middle pedal, it does something different, particularly on upright pianos, which are designed to be in people's homes. So you often push the pedal and then like lock it. Mine doesn't do that because it's electric and it creates a permanent like quiet sound to enable you to practice quietly. And this one is called the una corda. That means one string. So as I said, on a real piano, when you press a note, when you hit a key, um, it doesn't hit just one string, it hits three. So when you press this pedal down, it means that only one of the notes is striped, creating a much quieter, um, like more muted sound. It's also called the soft pedal as well. It gives a softer effect. So those are all the pedals. So I'm now going to show you how to actually use, well, the sustain pedal. And as I said, I'll demonstrate the other two there as well. So I'm now going to demonstrate how to actually use the pedal and do legato pedaling. So you'll see my foot in a minute and hopefully you'll be able to see how my hand and my foot is coordinated. So just a bit about leg seat posture. So you want to be sat far enough away from the piano because particularly if you have long legs, you're gonna struggle to actually move your foot. So we move the foot and you can see there, I'm moving up from my heel like that. So if you sat too close, that's going to be really difficult to do and that will put strain on your foot. <laughs> so you need to be sat a good distance away on your chair, on your piano stool, and with your leg out and you use the tip of your foot. So if I play, I use my left hand so you can see a bit better. The rule of thumb is to refresh, as in bring your foot up and down, hopefully you can hear the mechanics of the pedal. I'm going to try and make that a bit more obvious. The rule of thumb is to refresh the pedal as you're holding down a new chord. So we're just going to talk about chords for a moment. You can either start with the pedal down and then start playing, or you can press it first and then put the pedal down. But obviously you need to catch the pedal. If you go like that, you're not going to catch it. So we have down, And then I'm going to change chord, 
whilst I'm holding that chord down, I'm gonna move my foot back up and down. So we don't want, unless this is the intended effect, but this isn't legato pedaling. Because you get that gap between. So you don't want that. Sometimes that is notated in music and sometimes that's the effect that is required. Um, I've come across many pieces of music which have a stop gap between each chord and that's the effect that that composer was going for. But for legato pedaling, the pedaling that I usually use and for like playing chords and things like that, it's a more of a constant sustain. So again, so we have and the start with the pedal down, quick with a foot. <laughs> in order to conceal the fact that you have refreshed that cleared the pedal, you have to bring your foot up and down very quickly as you're holding the new chord down. So there will be a moment where the chords very slightly overlap and the quicker you refresh the pedal, the less time you'll hear that overlap. So yeah, most pieces of music, yeah, just require you to refresh the pedal. Every time there's a new chord change, it could be a lot quicker like this. I'm literally just making something up. Or it could be a lot more drawn out. So if you have melody, this is where it becomes a bit trickier. But there is an element of you using your ear, and if you think it's getting the music and the sound is getting too muddied and then you will need to strategically refresh the pedal as you're holding a note down or a chord down. That is the gist of legato pedaling. So what if you're playing a melody? Every bar. will need to be refreshed. And as long as you're keeping the left hand quite soft as well, if you play louder, and then that's gonna create more muddiness, less clarity within the notes, particularly if you're playing lots of um, lower end as well. Um, so that drowns, tends to drown out the higher end a lot more. So if you're playing more louder, lower end, you're gonna to need to refresh the pedal a lot more often than if you're playing up here, and if you're playing softer. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Melodies, this is a, I don't know if you recognize this. So I'm refreshing it on the beginning of every bar. So there could be moments as well where you might decide it would be a nice contrast to lift up the pedal, maybe if it's the start of a new section. So there, for example, on this one, we had... So I took the pedal off there, and then the new phrase starts the next bar, and you can put the pedal back down then. etc. So using contrast with using the pedal, not using the pedal, can also sound effective as well. It's a subtle way to signify to the listener that something is about to change, something new is about to start, like a new section. So it's something to consider in your playing as well, or your compositions. So even if it's not chords and you're playing singular notes, the same rules, sort of rules apply either at the beginning of each bar Sometimes that may be, as I said before, more often, so maybe the middle of the bar as well, but again, it needs to be done in a strategic way, not just when you suddenly hear it, you have to conceal it by holding something down. 
but it's a very fine-tuned coordination. Um, so if you're playing something that's more singular, there. So there I've got to hit it on one note, on a quaver. if you recognize that music I, I don't think I was playing it entirely right but that's just to show lots of singular notes so again I was holding it down I was refreshing it on that note because that's the first note of the bar refresh refresh and then sometimes it, you can create a really nice dream like effect um, with the sustain pedal, so. So you're just keeping it down, it blows everything to together so it sounds really impressionistic. So the middle pedal, just quickly as well, you can hold something specific down, but it won't affect anything else. So you have to play the chord first, and then you can play something else. So on a digital piano, the unicorda pedal doesn't create much of an effect. It's quite hard on a dig digitally to replicate that sound, to replicate that effect. It does make it sound a bit quieter and more muted and less resonant. The damper pedal has a much more of effect on real pianos, uh, particularly on grand pianos, uh, which are very, very loud instruments. If you've ever played a full grand piano, you'll know how loud they are. You know, they're designed for concerts. So in order to create something that's much softer, when a quarter pedal is used and you can combine the pedals as well. So I hope that was informative and then it gave you a bit of insight on how I use the pedal and you know effective ways you can use the pedal. Let me know if you've never used a pedal before and you've been inspired to use the pedal from this video. And hopefully when you start to get accustomed to the coordination, coordinating your feet and the hands, it can really sort of revolutionize and heighten the enjoyment of playing the piano. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it's useful. If you'd like to leave a piano tutorial request, you need to click on this video, which takes you through to my official request space. You do need to be subscribed. All requests are noted and considered. So I look forward to seeing you over there.